Hi there, my name is Pamela and I breed British Shorthair Cats in Perth, Western Australia. I've been breeding and exhibiting my cats since 2004 and I'm even a cat show judge. I'm passionate about the cat fancy and I want to share my knowledge and experiences with you so that you can enjoy your hobby as much as I do. That's what the Cat Breeding for Beginners podcast is all about. In this series, I'm taking a moment to answer some of the most regular cat breeding questions I get asked every day. Hopefully the answers will help you too. I'm also covering some topics that are important to new cat breeders so that you can start out on the right foot. Some of the episodes are scripted and some of them are off the cuff. The audio is both good and bad. But the main thing is the information and I'm sharing it in whatever way I can with you in mind. Something that a lot of new cat breeders and a lot of well-established ones as well often find really confusing is blood type incompatibility. It's called feline neonatal iso... Okay, so I have so much trouble pronouncing it that I've actually found a pronunciation pronunciation on on Google and I'm just going to play that for you. Neonatal isoerythrolysis. Yeah that i call it blood type incompatibility in cats that's just my version of it because i can't say the actual word the problem i hear time and time again from people is that the information that's available out there is really hard to understand and there's a lot of scientific explanations using a lot of genetic terminology and that gets very confusing very fast So let's just focus on what you need to know so that you can avoid it or deal with it when you do matings and have kittens. So what actually is blood incompatibility in cats? The simplified explanation as to what it actually is, is that cats have blood types that are incompatible. I mean, that sounds really simple, but that's actually what it is. Just like people, people, when you go to have um, blood, you give blood donations and those blood donations are used to help other people. It's really important that they know your blood type. And it's really important that you get the right blood type when you're receiving a donation, because if you don't, then you have a problem. And we know about universal blood types like O negative can go to everybody. But then we know there's a lot of other blood types that cannot mix together. They just can't be mixed together because it causes a problem. And this is the same for cats. Cats with certain blood types have antibodies to other blood types. Now, antibodies, what are they? Well, we've heard a lot about antibodies um, recently because of COVID. So there's a lot of explanation out there as to how they work, thanks to um, the explanations we get about coronavirus and um, vaccinations. But what an antibody actually is, is it's a message to the body that something's bad for it and a signal as to how to respond to it and what weapons to use to respond to it. So how does this affect kittens? Well, if mum has a blood type that doesn't like or match her kitten's blood type, then you have a problem. They are okay while they're growing in the womb. It's fine then. But when they are born, and this is a really simplified explanation, when they are born, their tummy absorbs those mother's antibodies from her milk. So all the antibodies that she has in her that tell her that this is bad for you and tell her, say, this is how to fight the thing that's there that's bad for you, all of those antibodies go into the kitten through its gut. This gives the kitten its mother's weapons to fight off viruses and sicknesses until it can make its own ones. So think of it as the mum cat giving her kittens the weapons to fight off sickness and that they get absorbed from her milk into the kitten's stomach. The kitten's gut, its digestive system, it can only absorb these weapons for a short period of time. It's normally between 12 and 24 hours depending on who you listen to. I go by 18 hours. It seems to be about right. If the mum has a blood type that's not compatible with other blood types, she will pass her antibodies to that other blood type to her kittens. If the kittens are the other blood type, then the antibodies will do their job and they will attack the kitten's blood because it sees it as the wrong blood. 
the kittens will die. Now, you may hear people say, oh, I never have a problem with it, or they just get a bit jaundiced and one of them lost the tip of its tail, you know. Okay, this is this this can happen. Some kittens are affected less than others, but why would you even want to risk even having that happen to your kittens? I think it's better just to understand the problem and deal with it, not that outcome. No one wants that outcome. So how do you avoid it? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to blood type your cats and you can blood type them with a DNA test or you can use their parents' results to predict their blood type. Some breeds are affected a lot more than others. Now, let's have a chat about blood types. For the purpose of this pod and being very, very basic, let's just say that there's A and there is B. There is a rarer type called AB, but it really confuses the discussion. It's not common. I don't know anyone here in Australia that has it. I think it is maybe more out there in other countries, but here I don't know about it. So I just want to park it for now. The only reason I'm mentioning it is because when you get your DNA test results back, they actually can't identify it. They can identify A and they can identify B, but they can't identify this rarer type, which they call AB. And that wording is also very confusing. So what they will tell you in the results is often that it says a cat might be B and non-B. And you think, well, non-B must be A, but non-B can be A or it can be that other rare type, AB. So that's what that means. So I'm just telling you about that one because it explains what your test results might be. But if you get a test result that says your cat is B and non-B or non-B and B, that means that your cat is um, A and B. So I'm going to say it that way. I'm going to put the and in the middle as much as possible. Okay, so what does that mean? Basically, A is the dominant blood type and B is the recessive blood type. All cats have two copies of the genes for blood types. They can be both the same, so A and A or B and B, or they can have one of each, A and B, forgetting that rare AB type. If one of the genes is A, then the cat will have a blood type. It's the dominant gene. If they have A and a B, then the A overrules the B. That means the only way for a cat to be B blood type is it has two copies of the B blood type gene. Okay, so we do a DNA test. If the cat has an A gene, it's A blood type. If it has two B genes, it's B blood type. But what does that actually mean? Going back to the cat's antibodies, those weapons, and thinking about how people can only get blood transfusions from compatible blood types, this is the fundamental issue. A B blood type queen, the mother cat, she has antibodies to A blood type. So she has weapons against blood that is of A blood type. She has weapons to fight it. If she gives birth to an A blood type kitten and she passes those weapons to the kitten and it absorbs them from her milk in its gut, they will go into the kitten's bloodstream and they will attack its blood and it will die. So what can you do about it? Well, you can avoid it or you can deal with it. I actually prefer to avoid it. In all my years breeding, um, very affected by the issue because I breed British short hairs and I have a lot of A cats and I have a lot of B cats. I started off with B cats and I've tried to move towards A cats, but you know, I've been trying that for about 15, 16 years and I still have a mix of both. So I've tried to avoid it as much as I can, but I have had two litters where there was no way around it to do that mating and I had to deal with it. If you want to make sure you never have to even think about it, you need to use those blood test results. Um, you can avoid the issue completely if all of your cats, male and female, are blood type A and A or blood type B and B. 
for some breeds this is already the case um, i know rag dolls in australia are predominantly a and a predominantly they don't have b so they don't have to worry about it it's still a good thing to check but it's not something that becomes a big issue for you but uh, what if you have a mix of blood types some a and a some a and b and some b and b well you have to choose matings really carefully and either avoid the issue like i normally do or deal with it like i've had to do twice i've only done it when i've had no other option when i really wanted a mating between two cats and the only other cats that i had to use were related or there was some reason or it was for a specific color so I really didn't want to do it, but I have done it. If you have an A and A or an A and B boy and you put them to a B and B female, then you have an incompatible mating. So if you can avoid that by choosing to only put BB boys to BB girls, you actually won't have a problem. And that's what I've done for a long time. I've always had a BB male. At the moment, I think I only have one with a younger one coming on. But I've always had a BB male so that I could always do a mating to if I ended up with a BB female. Or if you know someone that has one that, that you can use, that's another issue as well. And when I have people who do come and use my studs for matings, I always, the first thing I ask them is what blood type is your cat? Because that's going to determine which boy we're going to use. Because I'm not creating problems for other people by having them have incompatible blood type matings. If they really want to do it and they can explain to me why, you know, that really needs to happen, then I'll go for it. It hasn't happened yet, though. I've always been able to say, well, this one or this one. So if you can't do that and you actually do need to put an A and A or an A and B boy to a B and B girl, you need to stop the kittens feeding on the mum while they can absorb her antibodies, while they can absorb her weapons. Why do you need to do this? Well, because all or some of those kittens will be A and A or A and B blood type. And it will attack, those antibodies, those weapons will attack their blood. Now, if dad is A and B to a mum who is B and B, some kittens will end up being B and B. And they'll actually be perfectly safe. And this explains why some people say, oh, it's not a real problem. I just put all my cats together and it's fine. Well, maybe they've been lucky and all they've got is B and B kittens. Or um, maybe they've, you know, people sometimes say, oh, I lost a couple of kittens in the litter. It's fading kitten syndrome. But they don't realize the real issue is that they've got a blood type incompatibility. And while some of those kittens have been B and B and been perfectly safe and they've, they've been fine, maybe they had a litter of five and two kittens died after 48 hours. But those two kittens might have been the kittens that were A and A or A and B blood type kittens. And so the mum's, mum's antibodies, the mum's weapons attacked them um, and attacked their blood. But people sort of pass it off as something else because they don't understand the real issue. And that's the thing, that when you're having a litter where it's an A and A, sorry, when dad is an A and B um, cat and he's going to mum who's B and B, the ones that are going to come out that are going to be B and B, you can't actually know which ones they are. So you have to treat the whole litter as being affected. You can get some things called snap tests, some um, blood tests that you use for the cord blood, but I've never bothered with this. Um, I've also only ever done it twice. So I just went with the method that I thought would be best and it worked for me. So you can do that, but I've not, I don't know how successful that would be. I just prefer to take all of them away when they're born. Now you need to be there and watching mum constantly to see when she's going to go into labour so that when it happens you can make sure you're present because you really do need to have them come out of mum and not go anywhere. They need to be dried off and, and that but you don't want them to suckle from mum at all. So they get born, you start a timer 
and then it's up to you to feed them every two hours. Now, on my YouTube channel, Cat Breeding for Beginners, there's a video um, about kittens first feed, and it actually shows you what I do when I'm giving my litter of kittens their first feed while their mum's still giving birth, and that can be easily translated to what you have to do when you're doing a blood type incompatibility mating. You just take them away, and instead of feeding them that one time, you're going to be feeding them for several times over a period of time. So you take them out, you start a timer when the kittens are born, and um, if you have different colors, depending on the type of cats and kittens you have, you can start a timer for the blue kitten and write that down and then start a timer for the red kitten and write that down and you can put them back progressively in that order. But you can just wait until they're all born and start the timer from then as well. Um, so you can give them back to their mum after 18 hours. And the reason they do that is when they can no longer digest those antibodies in their gut. They are gut is no longer receptive to them those weapons that are going to attack its blood cannot get into its blood anymore they're still there in mum's milk they just can't get into the kitten anymore so that bit's really easy to understand they're taking the kittens away but you know what to do when they're born that part of it is easy really it's not an easy job to do but it's easy to understand the hard part to understand that everybody seems to get tripped off on is you know, which cats can go with each other and what will be the result. So let's make it really simple and clear. You only have a problem if mum is B and B and dad is not. So test all of your cats, know what they are. If you decide to keep a kitten for breeding, work out what its blood type is too. If you don't know how to do that, look online, ask another breeder or just do a DNA test because some of the kittens could actually be more than one blood type. So depending on the parents, the kitten might be able to be AA or it might be able to be AB or it might be able to be BB. In some litters that I've done, it could be anything. So you have to do a DNA test um, to find out what they are if you're going to keep that cat for breeding, that kitten for breeding. If your mum is B and B and dad isn't, then you'll have to take away the kittens at birth. That's what it comes down to. Fundamentally, if mum's B and B and dad is not B and B, then you have to take the kittens away at birth. So I hope that was a simplified explanation of what's a pretty complex issue affecting many breeds and breeders. My main piece of advice is to know all of your cat's blood types, either from DNA or based on their parents' blood types. Plan your matings to avoid it, but if you can't, do it with a lot of planning and preparation so you can feel confident when the kittens are born that you know what to do and you're going to go on to have a happy and healthy litter. Don't be afraid of it. Just be really, really aware of it. Thanks for listening to the Cat Breeding for Beginners podcast. Make sure you visit my website at catbreedingforbeginners.com for lots more information. You can sign up to my email list and stay tuned as my Cat Breeding 101 online course is coming soon.